Established in Florence, Italy, by Gucci o Gucci in 1921, this Italian label has grown steadily into a global powerhouse in the fashion and leather goods industries. Gucci is worth about 37.9 billion US dollars and is consistently named one of the top 100 global brands by Business Week magazine. Their annual sales are around $10.5 billion. Number 1. True rags to riches is the story of Gucci, the son of a lowly Italian leather worker. Gucci o Gucci aspired desperately to live a life different from his father's. Free from the monotony of daily labor, Gucci brought his expertise with him when he went to Florence. Using leather and shaking up the business world, Gucci overcame the limitations of his childhood and rose to become a legendary figure in the world of leather goods design. The fashion industry is often said to be full of young people, but did you know that Gucci started his own brand in Florence at the age of 40, a proof that climbing the ladder is the only way to get to the top. He drew inspiration from the British nobility who frequented the renowned hotel during his years of service there. Number 2. Gucci is not an independent label. The French conglomerate Caron owns Gucci and the Gucci Group. Members of the group include a bevy of fashion heavyweights, such as Stella McCartney, Alexander McQueen, Bottega Veneta, Sergio Rossi, and Yves Saint Laurent. Number 3. The Snaffle Bit Decoration, which has become a trademark, is over 60 years old. March 2013 was the 60th anniversary of the world-renowned Gucci horseshoe loafer, much like Hermes. Gucci's initial clientele consisted of the equestrian nobility who sought out the designer for stylish, high-quality riding apparel. The iconic horse bit detailing is a nod to Gucci's equestrian roots. Even though the brand's popularity has expanded to every corner of the globe, in the middle of the 1960s, Gucci adopted its other well-known trademark, the official logo The Two Interlocking Gs. It stands for Gucci o Gucci's initials, the name of the company's founder. Number 4. The original owner of the now iconic Gucci Flora print silk scarf was none other than Grace Kelly. The scarf does not bear the star's name, unlike the renowned Hermes Kelly back. In 1965, the son of the founder, Rodolfo Gucci, commissioned artist Vittorio Acaniero to design a unique silk scarf featuring a floral pattern to commemorate the occasion of the Hollywood legends and beauty's visit to the Via Mont in Napoleon store in Rome. As part of the crew's 2015 collection, brand artist Chris Knight updated the print, and variants of the iconic design are still available for purchase. Although many notable figures have shown their affinity for Gucci, no more so than Jackie Kennedy Onassis, the former First Lady of the United States. The iconic Constance shoulder bag from the 1950s became famously known as the Jackie O bag due to Jackie's love affair with it and the numerous photographs taken of her with it throughout the years. The unisex hobo bag was popular in the 1960s among actors like Samuel Beckett, Elizabeth Taylor, and Peter Sellers. Number 5. That which is most costly to purchase. The priciest Gucci accessory ever sold was a belt adorned with diamonds and platinum, which retailed for $256,970. This Gucci fact might be overshadowed by another, even though that is fantastic if success is measured in other ways. When you consider that the Jackie Crocodile shoulder bag, Gucci's most expensive in-store offering, costs just under $40,000. You can see that that is a significant amount of money for a belt. Number 6. While at Gucci, Tom Ford served as artistic director. Tom Ford, a renowned American designer, was appointed head designer at Gucci in 1994 and remained in that role until 2005. Many credit him with restoring Gucci's fortune after the fashion house's image took a hit due to infighting within the Gucci family and an influx of knockoff products. Number 7. The previous creative director of Gucci was Aless and Rome Michel. Although this isn't particularly surprising, 
it does play a significant role in the brand's narrative. After Michelle took over in January 2015, the firm's revenue increased by 12% in his first year on the job. Gucci has long been a fixture at Milan Fashion Week, and the house was unstoppable in the world of high fashion in 2016 and 2017. Say what you will about Gucci, it's gone viral. It was unexpected to appoint a less and Roe Michel, who had previously worked as senior accessories designer at Fendi and was known for his flamboyant dress, a preference for hippie blouses, floral trousers, and Indian influences, but he had previously worked under Tom Ford. A five-day turnaround for a replacement menswear autumn collection was his initial assignment at Gucci. Number 8. Wartime scarcity gave rise to the bamboo bag. Fascinatingly, the difficulties of World War II and its aftermath were the sole impetus for the creation of some of the most iconic designs for the brand. Gucci had to get creative in the 1940s when leather was scarce in Italy. So the label tried out hemp, linen, bamboo, and cane, among other materials. A saddle-shaped bag with a burnished bamboo cane handle was made by an artisan at Gucci in 1947. Years later, the Gucci burnished cane bag is still considered a classic and beloved accessory from the house of Gucci. Gucci also began using canvas and created their distinctive red and green bands as a result of a scarcity of materials. Number 9. Florence is the birthplace of every pair of Huspit loafers. Loafer with a gilded starful bit is immediately identifiable as the brand ambassador. Perhaps the most famous shoe in the world and the most famous Gucci product. It has been representing the brand since its creation in 1932. It has been made in almost every color, pattern, and material for shoes that one can think of, catering to both men and women. Workers in a Florence workshop wear white lab coats and exquisitely tanned leather aprons as they craft each pair. Number 10. The horse bit loafer can be seen at New York City's Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume Institute. Barbara and Gregory Reynolds gave us these timeless black men's loafers in 1984. While we're on the topic of museums, in 2011 the Palazzo della Mercanzia in Florence, Italy became home to Gucci's museum. Covering an area of 1,715 square meters, or 18,450 square feet, it chronicles the brand's 90-year history. Number 11. In 1953, Gucci opened its first store in New York. It made history by being the very first American outpost of an Italian luxury goods store. Tragically, Gucci O Gucci also passed away that year leaving the family business to his four sons. More than 550 Gucci stores can be found across the globe today. Number 12. As far as luxury brands go, Gucci came in at number two. The 10 most popular luxury brands are published annually by Forbes magazine. Second place goes to Gucci, which is worth 37.9 billion, just ahead of Chanel. Number 13. Gucci has worked with some incredible brands. It makes sense for Gucci to work with other niche luxury brands, and the brand's creativity has led to some interesting partnerships. The much-loved Peanuts comic character Snoopy was a collaborator with Gucci for their FW16 collection. A knitted jumper, crew neck, and t-shirt were seen on the iconic Beagle. Another wacky collaborator in this set was the troubled and rue persona of street graffiti artist Gucci Ghost. One midi skirt, one crossbody bag, and the artist's strayed Mark whimsical prints were all part of the collection. Over the years, they have also collaborated on various automotive projects. Their work on the Cadillac Seville's upholstery and the AMC Hornet's paint job, featuring green and red stripes stood out in the 1970s. Number 14. Promoting high-platform brands with a social and ethical conscience. Gucci has been a partner of UNICEF since 2005. A portion of Gucci's revenues will go towards supporting global initiatives in healthcare, education, water purification, 
and HIV-slash-AIDS prevention and treatment through their partnership with UNICEF. Notably, the Barbadian superstar Rihanna in a charity fashion campaign raised money and awareness in 2008 when her hit umbrella was topping the rankings. A portion of the proceeds from the sale of a limited edition Gucci collection was given to UNICEF as part of the Heart Tattoo campaign. Number 15. In 1981, Gucci had its inaugural fashion show in Florence, displayed in London, England's historic Westminster Abbey, was Gucci's spring-slash-summer 2017 collection. This will be the first runway show ever put on by a fashion house in the sacred grounds of the Abbey, which played host to Prince William and Kate Middleton's 2011 wedding. Is the Gucci empire something you're interested in? Do you have any dream accessories for your daily wardrobe, such as shoes, bags, belts, and more? In your opinion, should high fashion items be worn on a daily basis? Which Gucci pieces do you prefer, if any? in your collection. Here's one last bit of information to thank you for reading this far. Number 16. The Dionysus bag has become one of Gucci's most recent best-selling items, apparently the piece of clothing that every famous person covets. Whenever you open a tabloid, you're sure to see an actress or socialite sporting a reimagined version of the iconic purse, this time adorned with exotic flora, fauna, like and insects. Many thanks for stopping by today and we look forward to seeing you again next week.